Greetings and blessings to you from Global Harvest Assembly. We pray that this message will ignite a passion for Jesus Christ in your heart and encourage you to live out your faith boldly. May you encounter God's love and grace in a powerful way today. Just before I invite Pastor Clement to come up, he has just become a grandfather for the first time. And so he gets to do this Sunday what the joy of all grandfathers is to dedicate their own grandchildren. So this Sunday he'll be going to KL to be with his daughter and, and her first child, uh, Ariel. Is that right? Ariel. 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 And uh, she got a thick head of hair. I was looking at the video. But it's a blessing to have um, Mr. Clapham back with us. And um, yeah, so get ready for the word. He's gonna, God has given him some, some lyrics to put in, in, in song, which he normally declares before we, he brings the word. Amen. Can you hear me? Yes. Praise the Lord. As I sh shared with people some time ago, out of a dream, God made me write songs. I'm not like the sister who go recording. You could. Mine is more for ministry. More entertainment, right? So everywhere I go, I always sing before I preach, and that's what the Lord gave me. This song I'm about to sing is a testimony that I was hospitalized for a couple of days because my blood pressure went sky high, so as my sugar, and God saved me on time. That uh, the doctor found out that they had to hospitalize me and make sure all those things goes down. I came up, God gave me this song and I wrote it.
it just came the song spontaneously from the Spirit of God and um, I was really grateful to God that He kept me and preserved me alright you know how I am now one more year touching three score and ten you know it's three score and ten now no come <laughs> alright the next song is what I'm going to preach today Isaiah 55 and you, I don't have the lyrics you can look at the Bible you don't know the lyrics <laughs> Seek the Lord while he be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked turn from his way and the as I say to you okay. songwriter <laughs> so I didn't I didn't plan or ambition to write songs I'm not an established musician I just managed to play a song with a guitar that's all I know I don't even know how to tune my guitar I'm not shy to tell you about it I will use a machine to tune my guitar so as what the Lord put in me basically you can use it whatever let me encourage you, whatever God put in your hands, 
no matter how small you think it is, you put it to use, he'll multiply. You know, to date, I wrote 33 songs. Wow. In a matter of how many years? A couple of years. I wrote 33 songs. Every time the inspiration comes, and that's it. You know, they put it in song. All right? Even when I'm going to the bank, driving the bank, song came. I went home, I put it into a song. You know? So that is how the Lord moved. Before I go into the word, I just share with you something about my, the word. I put it in pictures. These are words in pictures. If you're interested to get hold of it on Proverbs, on different uh, popular verses of the Bible with a big one and a small one. Alright? Small one is $9, $8. You buy five, $7 each. Alright? And this is 20 bucks. Now I'll give you at 15 bucks. Alright? So if you're interested, you can come and see my wife. Alright? These are scriptures in pictures. Alright? You know? uh, I'm the artist. All right, so God has given me all those things in my hand. I will just use it, whatever can, to give glory to God. All right, now the word of God, seeking the Lord. All right, the Bible says that you seek the Lord while He may be found. Call on Him while He's near. Is Isaiah 55? You return to Isaiah 55. It's a very common scripture, and I believe most of you know about it and uh, I can't run away from that, and you can't run away from that. Alright? Now, why this was... Why this... Alright? It's a now word, as far as I'm concerned. The Bible says, seek the Lord. If you seek Him, seek me and find me, you will find me, you will seek me with all your heart. What is it like to seek the Lord? And what is it like when you found God? That's why I want to take you the journey today. What is it like? Alright? When you seek the Lord. And the, 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 the Bible says here, in uh, verse 7, or uh, verse 6, Seek the Lord while He be, may be found, and call on Him while He is near, let the wicked forsake his ways, and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my ways. As the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it may you seeds for the sowers and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes up from my mouth will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for what I send it. Then the, the other part is that you will go out in, the result is that you will go out in joy and be left forth in peace, and a mountain and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands, and say the thorn bush will grow, the pine tree, and still the briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be the renown, the Lord, the Lord's renown for the everlasting sign that will not be destroyed. Don't you sound like revival? It sounds like revival, doesn't it? You see, it's very important what you are confronted with when you see it. When you face the Lord, when you seek the Lord. Because when we come to the Lord, we come to a righteous God. Yes. Amen. And you will be impacted with righteousness. Amen. Whether you like it or you don't. Alright? When you come to the Lord, you will be impacted. With. Therefore, he said, let the wicked forsake his ways. You know, you will see in the Bible, the scriptures, Person like, uh, what is his name? The short man, what is his name? Zacchaeus, yes. Oh, give me a uh, getting old. So, Zacchaeus, Jesus came to the house. Did he tell him, Zacchaeus, you are a thief? Did he tell Zacchaeus, you are stingy? 
He didn't say anything. I just come to his house for tea. And what did Zacchaeus do after that? He confessed he's a thief. He confessed himself to be stingy. Why? Because righteousness has walked into the house. And where is your house today? Right? So it's been the Samaritan woman met Jesus at the well. What did Jesus tell, tell the Samaritan woman? Go call your husband. Say, I have no husband. Say, yeah, right, you're five. It's confronted with righteousness. That when you come to the Lord, your sin and whatever that holds in your life will be exposed when you face us the Lord. Whether you like it or not. You hear revival stories <coughs> recently. People who come into that place, they repent. The next thing was that they repent. Let the people turn. Let them turn to the Lord and He will have mercy on him. You will be confronted that you need repentance. That is our awesome God when they come into His presence. Not sometimes people think, Wow, oh, I come to the Lord, therefore I have this, I have that, I have this, and God get me blessed, He's blessed. Yes, God bless us. God is a blesser. I always tell people, when you meet the Lord, you cannot walk away without blessing. That's the truth. Because it's a blesser. In Ephesians chapter 1, you bless you with all spiritual things. It's a blesser. You cannot walk away without blessing when you meet the Lord in person. I'm not telling that He stands in front of you and He, he, he can see you. No. The presence of the Lord. You really meet the Lord. But there's one thing we cannot discount when you meet the righteous God. You meet with righteousness. You have to change. He doesn't change because He's the same yesterday and tomorrow. You have to change. And I have to change. And what changes you is not because of, of your determination. Not because of your righteousness. Not because you think you want to be good. But because righteousness has come to you. I have my fair share of experience about these things that, that I was confronted with the presence of the Lord. When I was in Bible college, I was quite rebellious. It's not learning, I was rebelling. And uh, one day I went to the revival meeting. And the, the speaker called the Bible College director out to pray for him. And I saw when he was praying for the director, a light shot out from his back. And one of the light shoot me short me and I went down the floor crying for two hours without emotions. It's not emotions. Because I was rebellious against the Bible college. You know what God said at that moment? Son, you have been rebellious. That's all I need. I cry and I cry and I cry and I cry. Not knowing what I'm crying for. <laughs> when I came up from the floor, as if I'd been boxed by my eyes. Because the blood vessels had broken around my eye. God is an awesome God. You cannot deny Him when you meet Him. And there was one time, we have a 30 day fast and prayer in my ministry. I stopped all my programs. 30 days, we fasting and praying, seeking the Lord. On the end of the 30 day, I started crying again. I don't know why. And when I stopped crying, the Lord said to me, Son, you've been delivered from rejection. You know why? In my ministry, I've been hurt by leaders. I was so afraid to talk to leaders. 
or pastors. Since that day, I have no fear of leaders and pastors anymore. <coughs> the change in our life is not about you suddenly desiring to change or trying to be good, trying to be a better Christian. The change is because you met the Lord of righteousness. You seek Him and you found Him. But do we seek Him? And when you seek Him and you found Him, you will change. There's no other way that you will change. You will turn around. No matter what kind of things you talk about yourself, whether what, who hurt you, who don't hurt you. I, I counsel many people. They say, who hurt me? That's why I'm like that. Who hurt me? I, that's why I'm like that. There's no longer that anymore. You just change. Because you have met the Lord. The Samaritan woman changed. Zacchaeus changed. You know how wicked Zacchaeus was? It takes God to change. Paul changed from a murderer to be one who saves lives. Yeah? The next thing was that you be confronted with truth. Oh, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your words. <coughs> You know, sometimes we think we are right. We have all the things work out. Until we meet the Lord, God changes all the things. You know, there are times when I, I go teaching, you know, in missions and uh, there was one time I was going to the UK to do a revival meeting. And all the notes plan out what I'm going to teach. On the eve of my leaving, the Lord said, throw your notes away. I don't want them. <coughs> Teach as I tell you when you're there. My thoughts are not His thoughts. My ways are not His ways. You know, sometimes I don't really know what to expect in the sense that there are moments when I prepare a message nicely. When I come on the pulpit, God gave me another message. I had to prepare the message straight away there and then on the pulpit. And there are also times that when I plan to do certain things that a certain ways of direction or, or write out all my plans and they become rubbish. Not that we shouldn't plan. Don't get me wrong. Those who don't plan are lost people and then say that they, they lost their rights. It's not that you shouldn't plan, but your plan must be submitted to the Lord. The Bible says you can have your plan, God has a final say. You be confronted with truth. You know, just as a Samaritan woman, Jesus confronted with the truth. Oh, you Jews worship in Jerusalem, we worship on the mountain. And Jesus said, you don't know what you're worshiping. Father is seeking people who worship Him in truth and in spirit. And that is a key thing for us. God is seeking people who worship Him in truth and in spirit. Today I find very few who dare to face the truth in their lives. I was afraid to face the truth about my medical problem. I never want to go to see a doctor. I don't like to go and see a doctor. And God put me in a hospital. I hate hospitals. I'm sorry to say that to doctors. Because I see how my loved ones die in the hospital. I said, when I go there, I won't want to come back already. But God changed my whole mindset. I need to know the truth about my own physical fitness. We need to know the truth. We need to be confronted with the truth. And if the truth, know the truth, and the truth will set you free. See the problem when we keep on denying the truth, you are in bondage. But when you face a lot of truth, oh, 
that is a painful situation. I'm going to tell you that. It's very painful when you're faced with the truth. But yet, it's a cutting edge. Because it's the God of truth. You cannot hide from God. When you want to seek God about, you know, some people ask me, you know, <laughs> one time, one, one businessman, he came to see me and knocked on my door and said, Pastor, I heard that you are prophetic. Can you tell me what God is going to do with me? God is successfully using me, counseling people. I'm helping so many people. You know, Pastor, Pastor what did God telling me about the future? I said, you don't know, you don't like what I'm going to tell you. I can take it. Tell me, tell me, tell me. He said, sell all you have and go serve the Lord. His face turned color because he can't sell his things. He was a successful businessman. Can you exchange what is of God for what you think is good? Do you know good is enemies of God? Do you know that? It's not the other extreme. Good can be an enemy of God. That what we think is good can, may not be God. You really find the truth. I have taken many pain to think that what is good and found out is not God. It pains me. Yeah? And then you confront it with the wisdom of God. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than you. your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. God's ways are much higher, deeper, wiser, glorious, myst mystical, whatever you call it, than our ways. You may say, oh, it seems so, you know, abstract, Pastor. You know, there are people when I'm teaching, Pastor, I have a question. You are very abstract, I can't understand. It's abstract because you are not in the spirit. But you are in the spirit, you will be able to perceive what God is saying. Because His ways is much higher than our ways. You must recognize that when you come to Him. He's always a better one. He's always a wiser one. He's always a perfect one. He's always a stronger one. Are you prepared to meet him that way? But sometimes it's not easy unless you are to surrender yourself before him. <coughs> when you meet up with God. You know, we can carry all our makeup opinions, all we think, oh, I went through life so much, I think I know a lot already. I'm sorry, we can never stop learning. Until today, I'm still learning. I don't care you're 90 years old today. You still need to learn. Because to, to God, a 90 year old is only 9 years old, or maybe 9 months old. You'll be confronted with a wisdom. His ways are much higher than our ways. His thoughts are much higher than our thoughts. If you really sit down for a while and be still, and you see how low are your ways compared to His. I don't care how successful you are. I never take that to count. I can be anywhere, any place. I went, I, 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 I go to preach in South Africa. I met this pastor. He told me, if you don't have a theological degree, you can't minister. I said, Peter has physiology. <laughs> Jesus has <a> carpentology. <laughs> what logic do you have? 
And he terminates is so insulting. He said, Pastor who has no theological degree are uneducated. So I said, wow, then I'm not qualified to minister in your church. Can, but you don't tell people you don't have a theological degree. I said, no, I'm not coming because I don't agree with you. And he has this bright idea, he said, you know the gospel people have been preaching all wrongly. Jesus spoke in Aramaic. People have translated the Bible from Greek and Hebrew. So, they are all deceived, but we all die. Then the Chinese Bible is complete deception. So these people, they come up with this bright idea. They think they are very wise. I, I come across a lot of these kind of people in my, you know, in ministry. You know, he tell you that the next day he pleaded with my friend who recommended me to speak in his church that I must go and speak in this church. And when I finished with the ministry, when I went with Greek TV, they're not, he doesn't even look me in the eyes. Because he has been proven wrong. That's why sometimes we have our own mindsets about all of stuff and our own Christianity than based on the wisdom and the word of God. Yeah? Our ways are not, His ways are much higher than our ways. We must not, we must be always be open to what God is doing. Always be ready. You know, there's, I always tell myself, look, Clement, who are you to write songs? You are just a basic musician. You can't even tune your own guitar. But God say, I want you to write songs. So what? And I'm very surprised to do this day. It's a real miracle. You know? One, song, one time I tried to ask a brother to fine-tune my song. He's a musician. He's an established musician. I said, make my song prettier, nicer, more presentable. And he did. He came up with a version, oh, much better than mine. You know what the law says? I don't want it. I want your song to be raw as it is. It's for ministry, not for entertainment. And that's what it is. You know, the brother is very sincere. I, lo I love him. He's a nice guy. He's very willing. He comes with two or three versions and show me what is it like. Fine tune a song with his expertise. I love it. But Lord said, no, I don't want that. <clears throat> I want your raw songs. We have a mindset that God wants his ways, not our ways. Yeah? And some of you will be re receiving the songs. I hope it will help you to comfort you. Some of the songs are comforting songs. Yeah? And in verse 10, 11, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and <coughs> making it bud and flourish so that it yields it for soul and bread for the healer. It will be confronted with a refreshing rain from heaven. You know, there, but it's, it's, you feel, feel so refreshed, renewed when you're in the Lord. You know, there are moments in my life I have to go away somewhere in another place or in another country. If I cannot afford it, I go to another place. All right? There's a time when I've been alone with God and be refreshed. To let the Lord deal with me without all the trappings and all the, the commitments I have around me. They will not become my distractions. Completely there. Nothing else to do but sleep and talk with the Lord. 
And then when I come home, I felt I'm so refreshed with a new vision, a new understanding of what is going on. Because sometimes we can be so interrupted and so distracted with so many things in our lives. You know, so many challenges, those who are parents, those who are, whether they're not parents, your job and your children and your home, your commitments, all those will be disrupting all your things. But there will be a moment in the presence of the Lord. Let the Lord refresh you. Complete it. You know, just between you and Him. Nothing else. Set yourself away. I even tell couples that I minister to, I say, look, ask somebody to look after your children for a while. Just go away. Just you and your husband. One day, two days, you cannot afford so many days or you cannot afford far away. Just somewhere. Or even to take your wife or your, your go out for a dinner. Just two of you. Have a refreshing. Some people are just all worked up with so many and then they get all stressed up. And who do we blame? You can't blame God. Right? And then, as I say, you, we need that. We need that in your life, especially those who are pastors, very busy and pastors, right? I booked these two fellas for, for our never come. I booked them in Bangalore twice. Didn't turn up. You know how expensive Bangalore is? Uh? <laughs> now no more. <laughs> I want them to have a refreshing. Don't work, 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 work until you, you know, you can lose direction, all right? We need that kind of time, all right? And next thing is that, so is my word that goes up from my mouth, it will not return to be empty, but be accomplished what I desire. You be confronted with the power of the word of God. When, the, when, when you are alone with God, when God speaks to you, there's power. Do you know that? person like Jairus. God said, believe. Do not fear. Believe. And she will be healed. Word. When the word of God comes to you, there is power. There is life. Because God's word is alive. It's not dead. How many of you know when you read the Bible, it's not just mere words. Just read, I just know knowledge. When you read the word, you believe that they have power. The word of God got power. When he says certain things, that he will do it and he will do it. How many of you know that? The word of God is alive. Is written by people who gave their lives to God. They were purchased by life. To me, that is the most precious thing in my if I if I ever run away from a tsunami or a war, it's the only one I think. I won't take anything else. He said, take the most important thing in my life. This is my most important thing in my life. You know, I want to tell you, when I, <laughs> I'm not very good with my studies. I don't like God make me a teacher. I don't like to teach. I don't like to study. I'll be honest with you. So that I never gone to university. So, when I'm well, I read, read a book, I will go to sleep. The most I can last is two pages. You know, I've lost of spiritual books at home. They are for display only. <laughs> or for reference sometimes. I need to know a certain subject. And my children one day told me, you know, Dad, I observe one thing about you. You never always fall asleep reading books except the Bible. Why? Because the more I read, the more I find the life. The more I want to know the next chapter. 
because I believe in them. I believe the answers come from there when I have a need. And when God speaks, there is no other way. The world cannot pay for that. Millions of dollars cannot buy that word. And God said, go, it means go. The word of God, you're confronted with the word of God. You know? That I felt that when that I just went to South Africa and came back. And before I went, what confronted me was my physical fitness. After I went to the hospital and all this, I want my wife to come along to take care of me. But her visa was denied. God said, do you still want to go? I want you to go. I have something that I want you to carry there. Man, my faith. And you know what? They say, oh, if you sit on a wheelchair, you'll be treated as first class passenger. No, that's not true. I was so disappointed. Next day I said, I prefer to walk. I don't want a wheelchair. I went there and nothing happens to me on my physical life. I'm able to deliver the word of God. You know, those days I stand like that. After a while, my leg cannot move, it is stiff. See, now I still can move. Because obedience brings something, just power. I asked my wife when I'm walking on the, on the stage there in South Africa, I sent her the video. I said, Do I look like I'm limping? She said, No, you look so normal. I don't feel that I'm having the leg problem. For your information, I have no, uh, what do you call that? Huh? Cartilage. Cartilage on my knees. All gone. And God is the one by His word that heals. Yeah? And here, the next one, you will, you will go out in joy and be led for in peace. When you leave, the presence of the Lord in the sense that after being confirmed, you will have joy and have peace. And that is that that is a confirmation for you. Even circumstance has not changed. But you have changed. Even sometimes the problem has not been solved. Still there. Even sometimes you still feel lacking. Still the thing is there. But you are in peace and in joy. Why? Because it's independence of our circumstances when God speaks it's supernatural. Amen. It's beyond the natural when God confronted you, when God touched your life. You know, I, I, I told you I hate hospital. When they, they told me something wrong with your brain part. Uncle, something wrong. I was in perfect peace. I told the doctor I want to go home. The doctor said, no, you can't go home. Why are you afraid of? I'm afraid of your bill. <laughs> <laughs> I said, let me check my children whether they want to pay the bill first. I was in perfect peace. He told me, Uncle, there's something wrong with your brain somewhere. We need to you know, make sure that it's okay. You won't get a stroke. I was in perfect peace. You know, I, I, even I go and, as a pastor, I go and visit people in the hospital. I don't like the smell of the hospital. I want to get out as soon as possible. But to stay in the hospital, he must be joking. I was in peace because I know the presence of the Lord is there. 
So when you are confronted with God and you have God confronting you, when you leave that place, you're full of peace and joy. You shall be led forth. You will go out in joy and led forth in peace. That is the confirmation. But the experience, the journey which I took you just now, you should know. You know? And there will be, this will be the Lord renowned for ever, an everlasting sign that you have behold the glory of the Lord. What do you mean the glory of the Lord? You have been touched by the goodness of Brothers and sisters, if we are not in that kind of thing, we are missing something. You are not condemned, you did not lose your salvation, but you are missing something God wants to give to you. And many times we, we just live a, we call it regular Christian life. I don't want a regular Christian life, I want an extraordinary Christian life. I don't want an ordinary Christian life. I want an extraordinary where every day I have these things coming on in my life, being confronted by the presence of the Lord. And that's what makes things different around me. Even the worst problems, the worst difficulties, that's coming against you. They are nothing compared in your time in the presence of the Lord. Nothing compared. It's not a moment of dramatic kind of emotional shaking or experience. Don't look for this kind of things. Look for the real thing. of glory. Yeah? Next one. Just now I give you some examples of people who had encounters. One is Zacchaeus, the other is Jairus. Third one is Daniel. Spent 21 days before the presence of the Lord seeking for wisdom. They came out with visions. Alright? And the fourth thing is that Moses, who spent days on the mountains, and he came down with the wisdom of God, the Ten Commandments. And even when he faced a certain problem, he called to the Lord, and the Lord gave him wisdom on the mountains. And this was important in our lives, always going back to the Lord, always going back to the Lord in everything. You cannot use your own self to do things, cause things. And I want to share with you the thing. It's not out of boasting. The songs I wrote, I don't need effort. I can do a song in two days if that's what the Lord gave me. I can finish writing a song in two days. Ask my wife, she will testify. Sometimes she tell me, does this song look like something else? I said, sing again and see. Why? When the Lord does it, you don't need many things. Jesus did three years to turn the world upside down. Some people, 30 years is still there. You know, one thing I, 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 I'm very concerned is that, and I, I want to also, want to speak to also pastors. Some pastors act like beggars. And the way they pray also at beggars. God doesn't manage to be like that. It's not that you're going to be filthy rich, but you'll be comfortable and God will make you to do His work. How can you there wanting to go and you, your family has no food? How will you work? 
and your family has no shelter. And then you say you are serving the Lord. Your children will curse you. And where can be their testimony? I'm not telling you that like those people who want to uh, pass on the buy private jet. I'm not talking about all these things. There's too much. I'm talking that God, He said He'll meet all your need in Christ Jesus. He meet all, all, all your need in Christ Jesus. And I can testify to you, all my years of serve ministry, I never have a salary. God has never, never left me behind. I was just telling these South Africans there, some of them are very poor. I said, God never meant us to be beggars. We are sons. We are heir. Not only sons, heir. Not hair, heir. <laughs> How can you testify yourself you are heir of God and you are wearing torn clothes and without food? Tell me, what do you represent? I'm sorry, I'm very strong on these things. Because it's a God we serve. And I, I told one pastor, if God don't give you the money to take a pass to go somewhere, don't go, stay home. He's your boss. Don't go and borrow money and go and, uh, 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 and I'm serving the Lord. Hey, I'm sorry. That's a bad testimony. Borrow money, go and serve the Lord. When did God tell that? When did the Bible say that? Go and borrow money. Do you hear Paul borrowing money? Or Peter owning, owning the loan shop? <laughs> hey, the pastor who owes money to own loan shop. At the end, they can't pay, they commit suicide. And I'm very, very, very sad about these things. Alright? Let's look at one thing. What, what is acceptable to God when we are? What's our attitude? Alright? To come into the place of seeking the Lord. First thing we need to know that we need to be focused and determined with a firm conviction. Never let go. God will honor you. I'm not saying that using your own strength, but staying put. Just now we sang the song, turn your eyes on Jesus. Staying put. Don't move until God do something. Stay put. I believe Daniel was sitting there 21 days. Staying put until he received something. I will not make an inch move without God doing, showing something. Alright? Daniel. God honor that. Those that have that kind of faith in Him, they will not move an inch until they see God move. Second, fearlessness. Humility and truthfulness. You know, it takes humility for Zacchaeus to climb up that sycamore tree to look for Jesus. You know, he's very short. Nobody wants to let him through because they hate him. They want to see Jesus block him, block him. So, he cannot be blocked. He climbed up the tree. And there are times that circumstances will try to block us when we want to do God's will. People will come around, you know, saying all kinds of discouragement. And people will also pour cold water on your situation. Don't let them find a way because God will always have a way. Remember the song? He will have a way when there's no other way. Find the way. You say, oh, don't have, no, nobody like, you know, that, that, that guy, who, that Jesus is here on the pool of Bethesda. He said, why are you there? When the pool was stirred, nobody helped me. And even when I go, people are faster than me. We are seeing the same thing. I'm not better than so and so. I have no means. You know me because they never ask. Oh, there are people better than me. Rubbish. 
Because when you come to God, you become distinctive. You stand out. Do you know that? When God's with you, you stand out. Look at all the things. Look at the stick, the, the snake that Moses threw down there compared to the other magician snake. Which one stand out? Moses snake eat up all the other snakes. God's things are always the distinctive thing. The stand out among us. Why? We say, oh, I'm not better than others. I'm not like this. I don't have thought people are faster than me. Rubbish. If God asks you to do something, His ways are higher than many ways. His thoughts are much higher than many thoughts. Yeah? And the third thing, unwavering commitment. That means, you are there Rain or shine. You know, nowadays, young people, especially, I'm sorry, I'm not saying all like that, okay? You get me wrong. Young people have a very, very weak sense of endurance. I can see my children. Having this baby is so difficult, one another one already. My mother, one after another, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> There are seven of us. <laughs> and some don't even go to the hospital. Isn't they have specialist hospital? They have confinement ladies. One man child is also difficult. I don't think I want another child. I said, you say. But God didn't say that. There's a problem. Today's young people, they live in push button lifestyle. Everything easy. Go out, grab, grab. <laughs> Cannot walk. <laughs> my, my daughter went to the university. Her university is just walking distance from there, here to there, maybe about half a mile. She take taxi. <laughs> Don't say we walk. She take taxi. I say sorry, I think I better ship you out. <laughs> Next to the university. <laughs> young people. Younger generation today. You know there was this uh, people asked this couple, you know, you've been married for fifty years, what make it works? You know what they replied? In our days when things don't work, we repair it and make it work. So is our marriage. But today, people, when things don't work, they throw away. So is their marriage. <clears throat> it's so true. You know, I have a, my, my niece friend, he said, I'm going to see my friend. Why? After a few days, marriage, she went divorce already. <laughs> Can't stand it. You see, even today in the church, I'm discouraged. My pastor wasn't encouraging me. I want to resign. I am I'm too tired. Those days we look, it's a privilege to be a full-time ministry. Now full-time ministry is a <clears throat> is a dirty word. Yeah, in my time. People all wanting to be a full-time pastor, full-time leader, full-time you know, servant. Now you ask them, ah, dirty word. Unwavering commitment. God is looking for such people that His presence are looking, those who worship Him in spirit and in truth. Number four, faith in God's word or respond and answer. God looking for people who put their faith in His Word and believe what He says is true. Alright? You, know, you don't need a translation to tell you when God said you are His children. Do you need a Greek or Aramaic to tell you that you are God's children? You need to type, don't to dissect it. What do you mean by children? How to spell children? 
What is that in Chinese? You don't need that. When God says you are his children, you are his children. Do you need another translation? How many translations do you want? You need Greek, Hebrew. There are people like that. Yeah? Faith in God. When God says you're an heir, what is my heir? My heir means I have inheritance. How come his children are looking like beggars? Working like beggars? The pastors are behaving like beggars. We are heir. How can you testify we are God's heir when we are begging? I tell God, before I became full-time ministry, I said, God, I don't want to be a poor pastor. I don't need to be rich, but I don't want to be a poor pastor. Borrowing money. When I have a father so rich, what I need to borrow money? Yeah? Number five, decisive action. Stepping up. God cannot give you something when you don't take action. It's wasted. Right? If I give you a bowl of rice, you don't eat it, you are still hungry. Yeah? If I give you a thousand dollars put in your bank and you don't use it, you are still poor. Because you don't take action to spend it. Oh, don't, don't spend it. You know, keep them for security. Then you will go hungry. Oh, don't touch the money. Let's get hungry. I will go and give myself a treat, man. Because it's God given. Yeah? And you, you God give you a car. Oh, precious. Don't touch it. The wife cannot touch it. You know? <laughs> I need to take this car to work and come back and keep there. Then your car is useless. I scared accident, don't drive. I always tell my wife, why is taking a lesson? No? I say, you scared accident, forget about taking lessons. No? Then one day, one this guy come to sell me car polish. You know, uncle, this is bad. I said, why do you tell the truth? No? I don't love my car, so I don't need polish. Don't sell me. <laughs> my car is, in Malay I say, lembu. <laughs> my cow, my horse, take me around only. Whether you got dent or no dent or scratch, no scratch, doesn't matter to me. God gave me an instrument, I use it. You know? Some people, wow. Every Sunday, polish, polish, and the, the wife scratch a bit, oh, I become a big quarrel, nearly divorce or so. <laughs> yeah, there are people like that. Their car is bigger than their wife. There are people like that. God wants people to step out. You are afraid to step out, you will never grow up. You're afraid to make mistakes, you'll never grow up. Peter stepped out of the boat, he sank. <laughs> because the eyes were not on Jesus. When he saw the problem, he sank. His eye was not on Jesus. But he stepped out. God honored him. And his, his mouth moved faster than his brain. Peter, you know? Before he could finish thinking, he thought already. <laughs> Not that God wants us to be rash people, but God wants us to be people of action. Doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. The word is useless to you when you don't practice the word. Useless. You're wasting your time. And that's what me. To me, time is very important. Time is a gift from God. Your life is a gift from God. I learned from it in the hospital. Now I come, I'm very great, great, uh, but grateful to God. When I come to Penang, I say, God, I thank you, I can thrive. Because those days, double vision cannot thrive. <laughs> I take grab. Now I can thrive. I'm so grateful. I can come to Penang, I can minister, I can still walk around, I can still do what you want me to do. I'm so grateful. 
Until we go to today, we don't understand. We take everything for granted. God gave you life, make, every, make use of every moment, every second of your life counts. That you make it work for the glory of God, it make it work for your own self, that you may grow up. Don't sit there and waste the time as a couch potato. You know, there are people ask me, Pastor, can you pray for my husband? I say, why? Every time he come home, I won't sit on the TV only. The Bible says, whatever costs you to sin, cut it off. So, kill the TV. <laughs> so that is the thing, that are you actively involving yourself in the Word of God? When the Word of God is directed, I got close here, but I hope this will be a blessing to you. Seek the Lord while He can be found. Call on him while he's still near. You know, God didn't go away, no? you know that. He didn't say, Call on him while he's still near. It's not God go away, you went away. While God is still, you're still around with God, call on him. Don't wait till you stray and go away and you seem to be lost, you don't know how to come back. Yeah? It's the truth. Some people have gone astray so far away they don't know how to come back. Alright? So let me encourage you. I believe in that very much. And I want to pass on to people that they, they miss out so much. The people of God have missed out so much. It's they blame the devil stories from you. The devil didn't steal from you, you give it to him. You know, they sing this song and then we declare, devil, you cannot steal this from me. Can you steal when you don't give him? Don't blame the devil, you give it to him. There are so many things God has been waiting for you to receive today. Are you there? Alright, before we close, I want to pray for you. You felt that the message is what you want to respond to. I don't know what you go to, I don't care, and I'm not there to judge anybody. When we pray for you, you stand up from where you are and I'll pray for you. Just give you a minute. Alright? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just stand up from where you are I'll pray for you. You need God to touch your life. God to answer you. Stand up where you are. I'll pray for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, you saw all these people standing from where they are. They are people who are willing. They are people who wanted you, for whom you are, and your word. Father, I pray for them, every one of them, that today you witness them for what they are, where they are standing from, and you will answer them, and you will instill upon them the working spirit to convict and to lead and to lift them up from whatever that is holding them back, Father. Father Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, let your blessing flow into these lives, Father. Yes, Father, let the work of restoration come into these lives, Father. Father, that God is you who can make the change, not them, Father. And you will honor them, and you will cause the change to come in their lives, Father. And from this day, Father, they step out. They step out from their boat into the water. Let their eyes fix on you. Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of their faith. They dare for eternal, Father, that God will carry your glory around and everywhere. That people will know you and they will testify of your glory and your goodness, Father. Thank you, Lord, for all these brothers and sisters. And Father, may you bless them and their families and their jobs and whatever that God has put in their hands. Yes. Bless them, Father, that they will be able to wrestle some blessings, Father. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.